was born a permanent family. I was into a historical family as well in Washington, D.C. As many more before me, Washington, D.C. was the place to be. I was born in 1981, in 1891. I received my education from Armstrong Technical High School and graduated from Howard University in 1917 with a bachelor's degree in music. I later married my music professor, Roy W. Tibbs, and we had one son. I'm a very gifted person. I speak and I sing in five different languages, and I have a very strong stage present. I began singing professionally as a lyric soprano in 1918. I combined my maiden name and my married name into my stage name and I'm now known as Lillian Ivante. However, my career was progressing very slowly here in the United States, so I decided to relocate to France in 1925, where I became the first African-American singer to sing with a European company. As you can see, I'm a very fair-skinned individual. Some would say that I'm a very attractive individual. So often I was mistaken as a white person, and I taken this to my advantages every chance I got, particularly in France. They didn't know if I was white, if I was black. They just knew that I could sing. Sometime I used this uh, to get me to, end to places where I could actually do my performance. I occasionally did radio performance, and I sang in a variety of operas, Although I was received well by the audience here in the United States, I still face I still face prejudice, which was something that was very apparent, even with my color of skin. In 1932, I was given a chance to audition for the New York Metropolitan Opera. Marian Anderson made it. I didn't make it. I was voted down, and um, my director, who actually convinced me to try out for the part, he couldn't get the, the other members to accept an African-American singer, and this was in 1932. Despite the setback, I remained popular performing in Latin America, Italy, and Europe, and I gave special uh, performance, and I had a command performance that I did for the President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his wife, Eleanor, in 1934. I also performed for the armed forces during World War II. In 1941, I assisted Mary Cardwell and other supporters in the establishment of the first black opera company. It was called the National Negro Opera Company. This company provided a venue for African-American performers like myself. I often did performance with the company, and sometimes I also did translation because I knew all the various languages that the opera was being seen. When the company presented La Troite, I sang the part of the Ate, which was a very successful and a huge attraction we often sold tickets for more than 10,000 individuals, and we had to add extra shows. I'm now nearing the end of my life, and I don't perform anymore these days. So I moved back home to Washington, D.C., where I'm now coaching and giving soprano voice lessons. In my life, I've broken many barriers, and I set the world stage for African-American singers, such as Leoton Price, Aline Addison, Marian Anderson, who are now appearing regularly in the American Opera. I struggle to realize my tremendous potential as a performer in spite of racism embedded in the opera world of my day. I am a very, a very versatile singer and I will be known for my dramatic performance and my commending presence on stage. Over my career, I have performed in more than 24 operas. 
I passed away on December the 6th, 1967. I was 76 years old. I am Lillian Ivante.